Coming from music and art, I got really fascinated with uh, translating physical signals, the human body, into music. It started with hackathons, basically these events when people come together to co-create and collaborate uh, with technology. And a lot of my early works were about translating heartbeats, brainwaves, motion into music. I think about it like the symphony of the human body. And it's really interesting to know that you have two different kinds of signals. One signal is something that you can kind of control. It's voluntary. For example, moving your hands or your head or even using your voice, it's pretty precise. On the other hand, you have sensors and technologies that are biofeedback based. And they're taking things from the human body, like your heartbeat or your brainwave, that you can't really control, and they make things out of it. And that's really, really interesting because when you make music out of something like brainwaves or heartbeats, it kind of makes you ask the question, are you playing the music or is the music playing you? So it became these conceptual shows where you had like a girl running and her heartbeat would dictate the beat. And you had a person meditating and his brain waves would dictate the melody. And you can move around and that would kind of orchestrate it. All these conceptual shows led to creating interactive art installations like a huge heart that you can touch and then it would mirror your heartbeat with light and with sound or two trees that are connected to each other. If you touch one, it activates the other and allows people, sometimes on the other side of the world, to respond to you through the tree. So yeah, using kind of uh, the magic of technology, you can basically connect people in different places across space and time in a way. And you can make them jam, collaborate, or have a mutual experience without being present in the same place, which is, you know, always kind of awe-inspiring to see what people can come up with. My friend Leon Sabari and I created a project called Lorim, which is a mirror spelled backwards. And it's basically this big sculpture. And as you stand before it, everything you do is reflected back at you with lights and with sounds. The twist of it is that if two people stand on both sides of it, it measures how in tune they are with each other. You don't know this just by looking at it, but if you play around with it, you might lock into someone else's movements just by playing, and then the whole thing comes to life. So these kinds of, you know, kind of creative explorations of technology were just a really interesting way to get out of your own head. The creative act itself is not really about knowing everything. You're not supposed to be the expert. You don't have all the answers. You're just experimenting. This sense of play and discovery that you get when moving into a new territory without limiting belief systems, without expectations, it's where a lot of good ideas are born.